What is up guys, Rick Kakis here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we are going to be taking an old exotic sniper rifle, the Izanagi's Burden, back from Season of the Forge that just got a brand new upgrade in the form of an exotic catalyst released only yesterday through the entire Last Wish raid and ranking it on its performance in every encounter. So you guys know just not only how good this weapon is, but how much better it is with that brand new catalyst. And so, let's get started. And first things first, let's take a look at the Izanagi's Burden. It has an exotic intrinsic perk called Honed Edge. Holding reload consumes the magazine and loads around with additional range and damage. And that's actually it for unique perks, so let's talk about the catalyst increases the damage bonus of Honed Edge when four bullets are consumed. So, just how much of a damage bonus does this catalyst provide? Well, I did some testing, and non-masterworked, I was able to do 12,049 damage for a headshot, I put on the catalyst, make it masterworked, headshot the same exact enemy, and 14,000 458 damage. That is an increase of exactly 20%. So your damage output is going to increase by 20% as long as you're getting honed edge times four, as long as you're consuming four rounds with those extra powerful reloads. Well, that's great, but how do you get this catalyst? Well, you have to complete the Heroic Menagerie, which released yesterday. I've done a guide, it's linked up above. And if you have a fully upgraded chalice, when you open the Heroic Menagerie chest at the end, you will 100% get this exotic catalyst. But you're gonna have to get around 500 kills with the burden to upgrade this catalyst. How do you do that the most efficient way? I've seen entire videos on this, so drop a like if you're happy I'm putting three videos in one, basically. Well, all you gotta do is load up the Whisper mission if you have access to it, and then go into the green room, drop down, and there's un limited spawning shadow thralls here. So you can just kill to your heart's content. You can make things go even faster if you have a hunter with tether, because you can tether enemies, shoot one, kill a bunch of them. But to be honest, there's so many shadow thralls that farming this with any class will only take around 30-ish minutes to get it completely done. Other options include the taken thrall on the Kali encounter in The Last Wish, you can do that as well. But if you're extremely low level, you can always do Escalation Protocol. The first wave is going to be nothing but a bunch of thralls just running at you. Go to a position and snipe them to your heart's content. Alright, so let's talk about that first encounter against Kali. Well, here, of course, you have the beginning encounter, just holding plates open and killing thralls. The burden is really not going to come up here at all, and in fact, you want to save all the ammo you can to get those honed edge shots. But against Kali herself, as you can see, with a Well of Radiance and a Melting Point and with as much Riven's Bane gear as we can spare, I hit for over 600,000 damage for a headshot with Honed Edge times four. That's a lot of damage. We're about to get Phil Swift up in here with the flex tape because this thing hits hard. As you can see, in just the first part of the first damage phase, we were able to hit for well over half of Callie's health and then finish her off easily in that second half. The one concern was simply ammo. This gun outputs phenomenal damage, but of course consuming four rounds of that ammo with every single shot, it just rips through your reserves. So in the end, we did have to use some like golden guns and whatever just to finish her off. This thing is more than capable of getting the one phase if you just switch to pretty much whatever to finish off the last, you know, 20, 10% of Kali's health. So, overall, very impressed with this weapon against Kali. The downsides are that, of course, having to hit headshots when she does squirm around a little bit can be slightly difficult, and also, of course, the ammo reserves is an issue. Other than that, it's phenomenal. So I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10, well above average. And actually, you know, for a special weapon, this is up there on the list of weapons that are really good against Kali. But moving on from there, we have the second encounter with Shiro Chi. How does the Izanagi's Burden perform there? Well, 
Here, you have six different damage phases and you need to do enough damage within a very short time frame to go to the next phase. So there's a lot of pressure on any weapon we're testing if it can do enough damage. And as you can see, with the Izanagi's Burden, we lined up, put down the well, got the melting point, and I whiffed like a complete blueberry. But hold up, she's already dead. Wait a sec, I missed. We basically only had time to all do one shot and she still hit that damage threshold immediately. Well, it turns out with the Izanagi's Burden, you're gonna see this in the background gameplay. It is so powerful with the catalyst that you only need about four or five teammates to hit their headshots and that will get the damage threshold. You don't even need all six people. You don't even need to shoot twice. Everyone shoots one single headshot. You're good to go. You're on to the next uh, phase. That's pretty insane. But here's what's even more insane. If one person runs up and hits Shirochi with an empowered melee, so you introduce another 20% damage bonus on top of everything, only three people out of your entire six-man fire team need to even be bothered to shoot a headshot and she will reach that threshold. That's just how much damage you're doing here. In fact, on the final phase, I did get empowered melee and then got a shot off and I did 792,000 damage. So basically 800,000 damage for a single headshot. Now, of course, there is a whole other portion of this encounter, and that is dealing with quite a lot of ads. And although you could headshot the crap out of the Taken Knights and a couple of ogres, it's really not at its best against the ads. However, that damage can't be ignored, and overall, this weapon gets a 9 out of 10. Extremely impressed with it against Shirochi. But it's time to move on. And the next encounter is an interesting one. This is one big damage phase and we are going for the kill. We are trying to kill Morgoth, aka Swolgoroth, within one single damage phase. This is a big test and a big show of a weapon's prowess. If it struggles here, it probably just doesn't have the damage output that you require for most activities. So. The first part of this encounter is again against adds, and again, it's fine if you have some extra special lying around. You can hone edge shot uh, the Eyes of Riven or the other yellow bar guys that spawn, sometimes the ogres as well. Not really too concerned there. How is it faced in the damage phase? Well, as you can see, it does shred. We're not reaching as high of numbers as we did before, but with Melting Point, 300,000 damage for a shot, and then as it goes away, 200,000 damage every single shot. And although I've seen Morgoth melted a little bit quicker, we had absolutely no problem killing this guy. Like, no problems whatsoever. We were able to one-face him easily. And therefore, again, very impressed by this weapon, I think it gets another 9 out of 10. Okay, now moving on from there, the next encounter is very different than the other three. We have the Vault Encounter, and here, there's no boss DPS. It's just staying alive, killing adds, and most importantly, slaying knights. Those are going to be your most powerful enemies, and sometimes Eyes of Riven. So, how does it do here? Well, against the Eyes of Riven, it's actually not great, and that's because they have shields, and this is a kinetic weapon, so you really can't get those precision shots right off the bat a lot of the time. It's okay, like it does a lot of damage, and if you do lower the shield first, then you can use this weapon to finish them off, no problem, but that seems like a lot of work, to be honest. The real question, however, is how is it fair against the Knights? And as you can see, with the Catalyst, the Honed Edge shot almost kills them. Like, they are absolute with one, just one headshot from this Masterwork Burden. And that means that it, with the introduction of pretty much any increase in damage, so if you put down a well, if you put down an empowering rift, you can one-shot kill the knights with a honed edge shot. Or, you don't have to go to that much trouble, you just honed edge shot them, almost kill them, and then throw a grenade, finish them off with primary, melee them a couple times. Like, you're doing so much damage and leaving them with such little health that pretty much anything, you can spit on them or breathe on them, and those knights will die. And that's actually really good for this weapon. 
Now the slight downside is that it's not necessarily as easy to use as other weapons. Like hitting your headshots on the knights when they're moving around and, and actually can teleport like through time and space. So you go to shoot and then they suddenly teleport behind you or whatever. And also you got to time it right when they come out of the fog. So often when they come out of the like fog and you're defending your plate, they're going to be really close range, which this has kind of a further zoom. So that can be slightly problematic. My point is, other things like shotguns and lock-on rocket launchers and stuff that you can turn your brain off and still hit these enemies, this will require you to pay a little bit more attention. So that's a slight downside there. But overall, it just outputs so much damage. I'm still super impressed with it. Honestly, if you're a warlock with empowering rifts and you can just one-shot all the knights, that's actually a very viable thing to do. So overall, I'm gonna give this weapon an eight out of 10 in the vault. But we do have to move on from there to what is basically the final DPS check and the biggest DPS check against Riven. And you know, we test some damage, we going for the cheese. Can the Izanagi's Burden with the brand new Catalyst with that 20% bonus damage, which remember, does stack upon itself. 20% increased damage becomes even more when you add a Well of Radiance doubling the damage and then a Melting Point, and you're going to get a pretty big increase from that initial increase. So, against Riven with Melting Point, I did hit for 482,000 damage in a single shot, and yet that wasn't enough. As you can see, we did do nearly one half of her health, which is impressive. And looking at the damage numbers here, we pretty much all did over 1 million damage each. And that's not bad, but it's not great. And it's just the fact that this weapon shoots a little too slowly combined with the bigger fact of that it runs out of ammo. Even if we were to increase uh, the rate of fire significantly, increase that reload speed significantly, which you can do with pulse wave, for example, we all ran out of ammo. So even if we got all of our honed edge shots off, we still wouldn't have been able to take down Riven. So therefore, not super great here, still above average, but it gets a six out of 10. But moving on from there, there is one more encounter and that is the Queen's Walk. Is the Izanagi's Burden any good here? Well, for this encounter, again, I usually say, well, you're just using supers most of the time and here, you're just using supers most of the time. Unlike when we tested something like the truth, where you can actually make the most of switching to that weapon, getting off some tracking shots and killing some enemies you really want to kill, you really don't have time to stop, line up a sniper shot, hit some enemies and keep going. There's a couple of parts where that might come into play, but things are a little bit more close range. If you get teleported, it can be decent against the knights there because they're basically the same knights from the vault encounter and we know how good this is against them. But yeah, I was not incredibly impressed by the Izanagi's burden on the Queen's Rock. However, I was not necessarily disappointed either. I think here it gets another six out of 10. So, the Izanagi's Burden. With that catalyst, it's outputting some mean, mean damage. Like we're talking 800,000 damage a shot. And I think against Shiro Chi, that really showed the power of that weapon. That with an empowered melee, three shots and she's done for. And therefore, overall, I think this weapon gets a 7.5 out of 10, just shy of an eight, but still a very good weapon. And I do think overall, that catalyst is worth going after. The fact that this is a special weapon and that you can use this after you absolutely go to town with, let's say, a Swarm of the Raven or whatever other powerful heavy you want to use and still have an incredibly powerful special, that's a huge plus. Guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.